Video game players all have ADD. They move from one thing to another without the basic ability to focus on anything for more than 30 seconds. Like moths to a flame and pigeons to gunfire, they flock to the brightest lights and loudest sounds without clear rhyme or reason. Now clearly, if you're a gamer yourself, you know that this statement, basically everything that I just said, is completely false. So the question is, why is almost every AAA open world game designed as though these things were true? Don't think that's the case? Well, I actually have numbers to back this up. You see, I've made videos in the past where I time out the space between individual instances of interesting events. Basically, I play a game that is focused on exploration and then plot on a graph how frequently the game catches my attention. I've done this with games such as The Witcher 3, Breath of the Wild, Fallout New Vegas, and of course, Red Dead Redemption 2. For The Witcher 3, the average time between moments of interest was 32.2 seconds. For Breath of the Wild, it was 41.8, and for Fallout New Vegas, it was 48.8 seconds. This all fell in line with expectations, specifically because in open world game design, there's a concept known as the 40 second rule, whereby developers try to ensure that there's always something interesting happening at least every 40 seconds. And they live by this. Most open world games that I've tested hold to this rule. And by the way, if you have a game you want me to test, leave it in the comment section below because I'm uncreative and rely on your ideas. But yeah, almost every single modern open world AAA game adheres to this rule. However, Red Dead Redemption 2 bucked this trend. When I analyzed its density, I found that the average time for Red Dead Redemption 2 was close to double that of its competitors. Now, an average of 80 seconds versus 40 seconds may not sound like it is significant, but it very much is. Doubling any stat in game development is a major decision. Imagine if in Ring of Elysium or Blackout or Fortnite, yes, I said Fortnite, bite me, or even Apex Legends, what would happen if these games' developers doubled the damage output of one of the game's most frequently spawned rifles? It would throw everything into chaos. Or imagine if in Skyrim or a Fallout game, Bethesda added a perk that made it so the player could travel at double the speed, or half the speed for that matter. It would fundamentally change the way that players explore. And in Red Dead Redemption 2, doubling the space between moments of interest greatly affects the gameplay loop. But before we deep dive into that, let's step back. Rockstar is phenomenal, specifically with the Red Dead series, at making players feel empathetically attached to the player character. Now, I don't mean empathetically attached like you feel when you're playing The Last of Us. Ross, ah. are you okay? Ron. <laughs> Case of emotion. Rather, Rockstar focuses on what I will call gameplay empathy. Now, before you comment, yes, I completely made up that term, and I'm sure that others have discussed a similar concept, but what I mean by it is that they try to make the player feel the same way as the character they're controlling by way of the gameplay's design. They do this by making sure that both the player and the character are experiencing the same emotions, feelings, and sensations while performing a given activity. The clearest example is exploration, a cornerstone of these games. If you haven't played the game, you may not know what this is like, but Red Dead Redemption 2 has a very unique ability to cause players to lose themselves within it. You see, the game doesn't allow you to fast travel from your map from city to city. Instead, if you want to fast travel, you must go into a town, find the stagecoach, and then pay them to take you to one of a selection of cities which may or may not include the one you're looking for. And furthermore, Rockstar didn't even put a mini-map on screen while you are selecting which city you want to travel to, which seems like a mistake until you realize that this too was done intentionally. You see, by not putting a mini-map on the screen in this specific instance, it forces the player to learn the map and the names of the cities in correlation with their relative locations. It's a small detail, but it makes it so the player learns the names of the areas within the world they are exploring. Now, was this really necessary? Well, maybe not. Certainly some players, possibly even a plurality, will know the names of the cities and be able to point them out on a game map with ease. 
However, for those players who weren't paying attention and memorizing imaginary cities' names, this is their time to learn, because if they don't, they'll end up selecting a random town and they'll land in a foreign area far from where they needed to go. This is just one of a plethora of tiny examples of how Rockstar crafted this experience around forcing you to become engrossed in the world. When you want to purchase an item in the general store, you can either walk through the store and buy the item off of the shelf, or you can go through the store's catalog, which is not made up of a series of flashy menus, but rather actual paper. Well, in-game paper, but you get what I mean. Or perhaps the most obvious and widely memed example would be the key mechanism by which the traversal system in this game operates, the horses. When riding your horse in any other open world game, let's say Assassin's Creed Odyssey since it came out around the same time, when you traverse the world, your horse intelligently navigates the paths, rocks, and valleys, all by way of its AI which steers it away from head-on collisions, falling off cliffs, and general hilarity. In Red Dead, one of the first things you'll learn while playing is that the horses in this game do not play by these rules. Like, at all. If you so much as nick a tree branch, you will be thrown from your horse while it writhes on the ground like Michael J. Fox breakdancing. Initially, I thought that this was just another Rockstar game mechanic that existed just because it could. However, after thinking about it, I realized that the fact that your horse is gravitationally challenged actually plays heavily into this gameplay empathy design. How? Well, when playing through Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you'll notice that the map is freaking huge. Now, normally, bigger is better, but when it comes to a game's map, it can be a blessing and a curse, specifically when navigation and traversal are not highly efficient. It can lead to a trudge when you explore as opposed to a fun and interesting experience. This inefficiency can take several forms. For instance, if I'm running around the west part of the map in Odyssey and then my quest tells me to travel to the opposite side of the map several in-game kilometers away, I'm going to be faced with a choice. Ideally, I would have so much fun traveling through the game world that I would be thrilled to be presented with an excuse to do it for half an hour to reach the other side of the map. However, in ideal situation, this is not. Most likely, I would instead feel frustrated and conflicted because I should want to travel there on my own, but will likely just fast travel to the closest point instead. For many, this is just an afterthought if it becomes even that. Most players fast travel everywhere without thinking about what is actually happening when you do it. When you fast travel, you are willingly and often joyously skipping past part of the game's fundamental design and gameplay loop in order to get to another part of the gameplay loop that is more fun. And I know what you're thinking. Why can't fast travel be integrated as part of the gameplay loop? Why is fast travel just bypassing it? Well. It can be, but my argument is that it shouldn't be. Clearly, most fast travel systems consist of pulling up a map and then clicking on the area to which you want to travel. Then you sit through a loading screen and appear on the other end, standing as though nothing happened. This is a really large missed opportunity. An opportunity of which Red Dead Redemption 2 took full advantage. And this is where we tie into the first example of the fast travel system employed in the game. They didn't just try to spruce up the loading screens or add narrative recaps to them like The Witcher 3, but rather they made it incredibly inconvenient to do and incentivized traveling yourself to the extent that according to a recent poll that I conducted, only 8% of respondents said that they often fast traveled. This is a huge success for Rockstar and I don't think it's receiving enough credit. And this is where the crux of this video's thesis lies. I believe that it is very clear to anyone looking for it that Rockstar has fundamentally shifted the way that open worlds treat their players. They showed that emptiness and a lack of hand-holding can actually feed the gameplay experience, not hinder it. Sure, the game still has some major problems, problems that I intend to tackle in my upcoming long-form critique of the game. By the way, make sure to subscribe if you want to see that when it comes out. However, despite all of this, just because the game has some issues does not mean that the entire game is unworthy of praise. Simply put, Rockstar proved to other developers and to us, the gamers, that it's okay to have some empty space in your game, that it's okay to leave the player alone with their thoughts, and that it's okay to leave the player to their own devices in making their experience what they want it to be. It's a style of open world design that forces the player into a state of gameplay empathy for the protagonist and that also embraces freedom across the board. It's a revolution. 
and one that we will be seeing the effects of over the course of the coming years. To me, it is clear, Red Dead Redemption 2 really did do something incredible. But that's all from me. Thank you for watching, honestly and truly. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to be notified for when the full critique of Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out. Thank you for watching, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.